The question is, what is second moment of inertia? The second moment of inertia is a sectional property. It is defined for a two-dimensional area like this, and it is defined with respect to an axis like this, and it is used in the calculation of stress due to bending moment and torsion. It is relevant to analysis of structural members subjected to static loading. Very often, we seek to calculate the second moment of inertia of this section about either the x-axis or y-axis or both. The quantity that appears in the bending analysis is called the second moment of inertia, and the one that appears in the torsion analysis is called the polar moment of inertia. Now let's talk about the basics of these quantities. First, let's define a few things in a general way, starting with what is called the first moment of area. Supposing, say, we have an arbitrary shape like shown in this picture, we're going to define a two-dimensional XY Cartesian coordinate system like this. Like we did before, we're going to take a little differential area dA at a point um, which has coordinates x and y. These quantities, x times dA integrated over the area and y times dA integrated over the area are called the first moment of area. Now, within the definition of the first moment of area, now we recognize that the centroid that we've talked about so far uh, goes with the first moment of areas, right? Remember, x bar equals 1 over a times integral of x times dA over the area, right? But x times dA is really the first moment of area in the x direction. So that will be qx over a. And similarly, y bar is nothing but qy over a. Within the same framework, the second moment of area is defined like this. Iy is defined as integral of x squared times dA, whereas Qx is defined as integral of x times dA, right? So that's the difference between the first moment of area and the second moment of area. And similarly, Ix is defined as integral of y squared times dA. It turns out the second moment of area is what we call in mechanics as second moment of inertia of the shape about the x-axis. So Ix is the second moment of inertia about the x-axis. Iy is the second moment of inertia about the y-axis. I also want you to take a note of the fact that x is used in the definition of Iy, the second moment of inertia about the y-axis. In other words, when we try to calculate the second moment of inertia about the y-axis, we use the distance perpendicular to that axis, which is x. And similarly, we have y in the definition of Ix. Now the definition of the polar moment of inertia. The polar moment of inertia, Jz, is defined just like the second moment of area, but instead of using x or y in the expression, we use rho. Rho is the radial distance from the z-axis to the point where the dA is defined. Now here note that z is the axis perpendicular to the xy axis. In other words, this is the axis perpendicular to the plane of this area. Now coming back to this picture and considering this right triangle, we see that rho squared should be equal to x squared plus y squared, right? Now using this expression and this definition for jz and simplifying it, we see the jz is also equal to ix plus iy. Now let me briefly show you where these quantities are used in mechanics. I'm not sure whether you have been exposed to these theories yet or not, but here's a brief description. Supposing, say, we have a beam problem like this, and we are interested in calculating the stresses at point f due to the bending moment m and the shear force b. In terms of the sectional property, the first thing you need to find is the location of the centroid of this cross-section. There is one line of symmetry for this cross-section, which is this y-axis. Therefore, the centroid must lie on that axis, but we don't know exactly where it is on that axis, right? In other words, we need to find this distance y-bar. Now, to the, for that, we need to kind of go back to our original uh, formula, y-bar equals 1 over a uh, integral of y times dA, right? We will learn methods of achieving this without using calculus, but this is the basis. Now let's say we take a little differential element at a point on this cross-section where we are interested in calculating the stresses at. The stresses on this differential element due to the bending moment and the shear force would look like this. Sigma xx is a normal stress 
and in this particular example is going to be a compressive stress at this point is uh, caused by the bending moment m and it's given by this equation right here is called the flexor formula sigma xx equals m y over i z where y is measured from the neutral axis z where the neutral axis is placed right at the centroid c so you can see to utilize this formula the first step is to find the centroid i z in this formula is the second moment of inertia of this cross section about the z axis so we need to find the second moment of inertia this formula is called the flexor formula something that allows you to calculate the stress due to uh, a bending moment m now coming back to the differential i one more time the shear stress tau x y is caused by the shear force b the formula for calculating tau x y is this where we have this quantity q z which is basically the first moment of area of the shaded part of this cross section now you can see the first moment of area plays a role in this as well Finally, an example illustrating the use of the polar moment of inertia. Supposing, say, we have a cylindrical shaft subjected to a torque T, like shown in this picture. The torque T produces a shear stress tau x theta on the plane of the cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis. In other words, the shear stress on the x-plane in the hoop direction theta. And we can calculate a value for tau x theta using this torsion formula. It says tau x theta equal t rho over j x, where rho is the radius of this point from the center of the circle. J x is the polar moment of inertia of the circle about the x-axis. Now you can see the role played by the polar moment of inertia.